In this video, we will cover dual curve pricing of swaps and other derivatives with Financial Instruments Toolbox. We are going to talk about the need for dual curve pricing and what changed during the 2008 financial crisis. Next, we will cover pricing swaps using dual curves. We are then going to talk about Financial Instruments Toolbox functions that support dual curve pricing. Finally, we will close with an example of dual curve bootstrapping. Before we start, let's take a look at why interest rate curves are needed in pricing swaps. Theoretically, a swap can be viewed as a bundle of contractual cash flows projected into the future. Now, the interest rates that are used to project these cash flows for future dates are collectively called a projection curve. In order to value a swap, you need to discount these projected cash flows using the appropriate interest rate. This varies by maturity and by cost of funding. Finally, a discount curve is the collection of interest rates that are used to discount the contractual cash flows. Before the 2008 financial crisis, it was assumed that financial institutions participating in the interbank market had equal credit risk, that all such institutions could fund themselves at LIBOR, and that there were minimal differences in credit risk for different lending maturities. Now, during the crisis, the spread between LIBOR and overnight rates such as OIS based on Fed funds widened. In this figure from a Federal Reserve paper, you can see that the LIBOR OIS spread widened substantially during the crisis, indicating market perceptions of LIBOR as being riskier than Fed fund rates. Similarly, the spread between LIBOR rates of different maturities widened as well, indicating a perceived risk in lending for longer durations. After the financial crisis, new regulations were implemented that required most swaps to be cleared centrally. Those swaps that are uncleared were to be collateralized. In other words, collateral should be put up and recorded on bank balance sheets. The point behind putting up collateral is that if the counterparty defaults, the collateral, along with the interest it earns, must be enough to cover the payments at the end of the swap contract. Now this collateral earns interest at overnight risk-free rates, which is why the valuation of such collateralized swaps should use a discount curve that's built off of risk-free rates such as the OIS or Ionia. So how do we price swaps using dual curves? Dual curve pricing proceeds in two stages. In the first stage, we build a discounting curve from risk-free rates such as overnight index swaps or euro overnight index averages. In doing this, there are complications around handling rate hikes after central bank meetings that we need to take into account. After we build the discounting curve, we systematically bootstrap the projection curve for contractual cash flows. Financial Instruments Toolbox has dual curve pricing functions and examples. The bootstrap function bootstraps interest rate curves from market data and accepts a discount curve argument. The swap by zero and float by zero functions price swaps and floating rate notes from a set of zero curves and accept a projection curve argument. Similarly, the cap by BLK, floor by BLK, and swaption by BLK functions price caps, floors, and swaptions using Black's model and accept a projection curve argument. Finally, the toolbox documentation comes with a dual curve bootstrapping example. With this in mind, let's switch to MATLAB and go through a dual curve pricing example. Here's a short demo that shows how to bootstrap and project a Uribor curve using Ionia as a discounting curve. We begin by setting up some basic curve parameters, such as the curve type, it's going to be a zero curve, a compounding frequency, which is annual, and the curve basis is on an actual by 365 basis. Let's run these sections. Now data for the Ionia and Uribo curves are stored in a spreadsheet. We import the data using the import wizard in the form of a table. Now 
Notice that the rate data contains rates for various kinds of instruments that will be used to construct the curve, the deposit rates, forward rate agreements, and swaps. Make sure that the start date and the end dates are imported as date time objects, not salaries. Now that we've imported the data for Ionia, we'll do the same thing for Uriba. Again, note the different kinds of instruments. We also have futures in this set of data. Now we've imported both Uriba and Ionia datasets. Now that we've loaded the dataset into memory, we can go ahead and construct a Ionia discount curve. Setting this up is easy using the IR data curves bootstrap method. Similarly, we can go ahead and construct an Uriba forward curve. Now we're going to create a Uriba forward curve using Ionia as the discount curve. The appropriate argument to use here is the discount curve name value pair, which is where we pass the Ionia curve. Let's execute this section. And let's see what the results are. In this figure, we compare the Uriba forward curve, which has been projected on a single curve basis with the Uriba forward curve that has been projected using Ionia as the discounting curve. It might seem from this figure that both the curves almost overlap each other. However, we will demonstrate that there is a non-trivial difference in computed zero rates. Moving on to the next section, we compute the differences in the zero rates and plot this. This figure shows that there is a non-trivial difference that can be measured in basis points between the zero rates that are computed on a single curve as compared to a dual curve basis. That concludes our video presentation. Thank you.